So I'm going to show you how to colour in a black and white image or an ink drawing in Sarah's case. So we need the image first and I've just stolen this one off the internet. Just You see just a black and white sort of silhouette image. So first off we need to open that into GIMP and you can either right click it and open with GIMP if you have that option. If not, if you just go to your start menu, find GIMP wherever it is and just open it that way. And then once your interface opens up, you can just file, open and navigate to where you've got the image saved. Mine's on the desktop. So just double click that and that brings the image into GIMP. So we want to color this in, but we don't want to color over the top of the detail. You can see because it's just a flat black and white image. If we try to paint over the top, we're going to lose all the detail and we don't want that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to isolate the black areas from the white background. So the way we're going to do this is, first of all, this is the layers menu on the right here. And we've only got one layer at the moment. That's the image that we imported. So I'm going to right click on that and we're going to add alpha channel. And what this does is it just enables this image to have transparency in it. And don't ask me how or why, but that's what it does. So after we've enabled an alpha channel on that, we're going to go to select at the top and we're going to select by color. And then we're just going to choose any area on this image that's white because we want to get rid of the, the white background. So click to select that. And then all we have to do is press delete on the keyboard. And that's, you can see that looks pretty weird, but it's deleted all the white areas and it's left only the black areas. It looks funny because it's still selecting the outline of where the white was. So to get rid of that, we just go to select again and then select all and selects the whole image. And you can see we've got the black areas left and the background is just see-through. That's the default background of the GIMP palette. So that just means it's transparent. Okay. So next we want to add the background onto which we're going to paint the color. So to do that, we need to add a new layer. So if you go to your layers menu again here, uh, right click and where is it? New layer. Okay. That will open a menu and the background we're just going to have as white just for simplicity's sake. So click OK. And you can see that looks like the image has disappeared, but what's actually happened is a new layer has appeared on top of our old layer. So if you think of layers just like sheets of paper in a pile, you can see on the list that the white layer we created is on the top. So if we just drag the silhouette layer up here, so now you can see the silhouette has reappeared back on top of our white background. Okay, so now comes the fun part. We get to colour in the background of our picture. So I'm just going to choose a nice grey colour here. And the important thing here is to make sure you've got the background selected and not the top. Okay, so just make sure the blue is highlighted on the background layer. Otherwise, your color will go on top of the, the detail and, and the silhouette at the front. So I'm just going to quickly do this to show you what I mean. We're just going to color vaguely round in a line. This is how I color in big areas. You just do a big outline. And then you get your bucket tool and just plop it in the middle. And it leaves a funny line, so you just have to trace around there. And you can see all the detail from the silhouette is, is still visible because that's above the layer that we're, we're colouring on, which is pretty nice. Just go around his 
hat. Let's see how bad I am at drawing lines. And choose a lighter colour for his beard. your time doing this. But... Okay, and we need a flesh tone, which is one of the hardest things to find. It's usually somewhere between red and yellow. acceptable. This is maybe a bit too tanned, but bollocks. Wizardy pole. Awkward bits. Okay, so you can kind of see the general idea there, and what I would do next is get some shade on it so use the dodge burn tool which is that little ball on a stick thing and a bigger brush if you imagine the lights coming from the top down you need to add some dark bits so this just kind of helps with the illusion of 3D if you add some shady bits. smudgy thing. Just smudge all this up so it doesn't look so uniform. Okay, so that's kind of it. You can see the general idea 